You're biting your nails in anticipation. You tracked your fertile window, had sexual intercourse around ovulation, and now you're waiting to find out if you are pregnant. But it can take up to two weeks to confirm if you're pregnant. This two week wait seems like it takes ages. Sound relatable? We've been there. But would I pique your curiosity if I told you there are symptoms you can keep an eye out during that TWW that could indicate you are pregnant? Although it can take up to two weeks to confirm pregnancy, you could experience early pregnancy symptoms as early as 8 to 10 DPO for days post ovulation. And in today's video, I'm going to explain what symptoms to look out for and when you might expect them. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Dr. Faith Schumann, and I'm going to walk you through what to expect during the TWW. Let's quickly review the events that happen around fertilization so you have a better understanding of the timeline. About halfway through your menstrual cycle, you release an egg from an ovary. This is called ovulation and is triggered by a surge in luteinizing hormone, LH. The egg can be fertilized for up to 24 hours after release. Once ovulation is over, the follicle that released the egg leaves behind a structure called the corpus luteum, which secretes progesterone. Progesterone maintains the lining of the uterus, so a fertilized egg can implant. If sperm meets the egg during the 24-hour window after its release, then fertilization may occur. After fertilization, the embryo travels towards the uterus so it can implant and begin to grow. Now that was just a quick explanation of what happens around fertilization. There's actually a lot more to it. If you want a detailed explanation, then check out this video. Now the part you are really here for. When will you start experiencing pregnancy symptoms and what symptoms should you expect? To better illustrate what you might expect during the two week wait, let's take a look at our friend, Average Amy. Now don't get me wrong, Average Amy is a special gal and is more than just average. But when it comes to her menstrual cycle, she's pretty average. Her menstrual cycle is 28 days long. She ovulates on cycle day 14. She experiences implantation on eight DPO and she experiences all the typical early pregnancy symptoms. Let's explore how she feels each day after ovulation, pre-implantation, one to eight DPO, and on post-implantation on eight DPO and onward. Let's get started. So during pre-implantation, Amy isn't experiencing much. She's excited and nervous. She started doing crossword puzzles to keep her mind busy, but other than that, she's not experiencing many symptoms. She feels a little bloated and moody, but this is common for her. You may find you experience similar symptoms such as fatigue, bloating, nausea, constipation, mood swings, breast tenderness, backaches, headaches, and a rise in basal body temperature or BBT. These are due to the rise in progesterone levels after ovulation. Remember, the fertilized egg is still traveling towards her uterus and has not implanted yet. Once the egg is fertilized by the sperm, the embryo must travel from the fallopian tube to the uterus. From here, the embryo prepares itself to implant into the uterus. It hatches from a protective layer to allow it to burrow into the uterine lining. Now, some women could experience implantation as early as 6 DPO even though eight to 10 DPO is the most common. And some women can experience implantation as late as 12 DPO. But remember, HCG levels need some time to rise. So even if implantation occurred on day six, there wouldn't be any early pregnancy symptoms yet. Any symptoms you may experience are due to the rise in progesterone levels. Once the embryo implants into the uterine lining, pregnancy hormones start to rise. HCG is the pregnancy hormone secreted by the placenta that gives rise to many of the symptoms of early pregnancy. HCG levels start to rise rapidly once implantation is complete. Typically, HCG levels double every 48 hours. Let's break down what Amy experiences during and after implantation. Amy initially thought her period was coming early because she started cramping. The cramps were located in her lower abdomen and felt like a dull ache. 
But then she went to the bathroom and noticed some spotting in her underwear. She noticed it was light pink and there was only a small amount, so she knew it was different from her menstrual flow. The bleeding that Amy's experiencing is called implantation bleeding. This can happen when the embryo burrows into the uterine lining, which causes the blood vessels in the uterus to break. This then causes the spotting as Amy noticed. This typically lasts only one to two days. Amy has been tracking her basal body temperature and noticed a decrease in her BBT. The dip in her BBT only lasted for around a day and then went back up. This is referred to as the implantation dip. The exact cause of this is unknown and is not a reliable way to confirm pregnancy. In fact, a dip in BBT can occur right before you are going to start your period, but typically the temp will stay low. Amy also notices that she's more tired than usual, has to pee a lot, her breasts feel tender, her tummy is hurting, she thinks she might be constipated. She can't stand the thought of even eating her favorite foods, and she can smell a trash can from a mile away. Amy got super excited about all these symptoms, so she decided to take a pregnancy test, 10 DPO, but she was bummed to see she got a negative result. However, she didn't use an early pregnancy test, so she knows she might not have high enough HCG levels to get a positive. She's going to wait a few more days and test again. Amy experienced implantation on day 8 through 10, which is ideal. Implantation after 10 DPO is considered late implantation. Attempts of implantation outside of 6 to 12 DPO, which is called the window of implantation, increase the risk of miscarriage. But Amy's pregnancy is thriving thus far, and she's beginning to experience even more symptoms as her HCG levels continue to rise. After 11 DPO onward, Amy is feeling more convinced she is pregnant. She's got the classic morning sickness, but was surprised to find out the nausea and vomiting can persist throughout the day and isn't just in the morning. She's feeling a bit more moody than usual and noticed her areola, the dark tissue surrounding her nipple, has darkened. Since Amy received a false positive at 10 DPO, she decided to wait until the first day after her missed period, 15 DPO, to test again. And guess what? She got a big fat positive. Yay! Amy's journey is a great way to give you an idea of what you might expect but it's important to know that your journey may look completely different. You may not have any of these symptoms and still be pregnant. In fact, you would be in good company if your first symptom is a missed period. Many women don't experience pregnancy symptoms until a few weeks into their pregnancy. It's also possible that you are pregnant and receive a negative pregnancy test. Remember, when Amy took a pregnancy test at 10 DPO and got a negative test, this is because it takes a little while for HCG levels to rise. If you take a test too early, if the test is not sensitive enough, you will receive a false negative result. For instance, the average level of HCG around 9 to 10 DPO is 0.93 milli-international units per milliliter. However, the threshold for at-home urine pregnancy tests is around 25 milli international units per milliliter. This is why it is recommended to wait until the day after you missed your period to begin testing. But what happens when you don't get pregnant? Could you have these symptoms and not be pregnant? If you don't get pregnant, you shed your uterine lining and the unfertilized egg during your period. However, you still may experience early pregnancy symptoms you could have symptoms such as nausea, bloating, tiredness, moodiness, and constipation. This is because many early pregnancy symptoms are similar to PMS symptoms. These symptoms are attributed to fluctuating levels of progesterone. You may also have wishful thinking and mistake your period for implantation bleeding. But remember, implantation bleeding and cramping are light and typically only last for up to two days. Implantation bleeding differs from menstrual bleeding because it is usually light pink or brown. All of this information we've covered so far is good to know, but it won't be overly helpful to you if you don't know the day that you ovulated. To calculate DPO and know what symptoms you might expect, you must know the day you ovulated. How will you know if you're at 8 DPO and in the window of implantation if you have no idea when your ovulation day was? 
The best way to track your menstrual cycle and reproductive hormones is by using the Anito Fertility Monitor. This monitor is more than just your average fertility monitor. Anito is one of a kind because it not only helps track your hormones to determine your fertile window, but it can help you confirm ovulation. How does it do that? Well, Anito tracks estrogen and luteinizing hormone, LH, to help track ovulation and your uterine progesterone metabolite, PDG levels, to confirm ovulation. When you use Anito to get actual numerical values for your hormones, these values are then plotted on a customized hormone chart that makes it easy to track and trend your reproductive hormones. Using the Anito Fertility Monitor is a no-brainer if you want to become pregnant. If you want to make tracking your cycles easier to boost your chances of becoming pregnant, use the code STARTERKIT15 to get an extra 15% off your purchase. I know the anticipation during the two week wait is almost unbearable, but I hope the information in this video can help put your mind at ease. If you have any other questions about the TWW that you would like for us to answer, please drop them in the comments below. Also, if you like learning about fertility and reproductive health, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. And don't forget to head over to Instagram and follow at Anito Fertility for more fun and educational content like this. I'll see you in the next one.